What should I know about Bear Cotton? It was under the moon. I felt my heart come. I held you in this strange light. A place where shadows. So basically, run. I'm looking to tie the entire world through Veritasium. That segues into my second question for you. History doesn't repeat, but oftentimes it rhymes. Currently, China's biggest property development company, Evergrande, is in default on coupon payments of over 300 billion in bonds, making it three times larger, I believe, than the Lehman and Bear Stearns collapse. I don't know if you remember what the figures were, but I, I read uh, that figure in a few articles that I've seen. Uh, news stories indicate that the Chinese real estate market is in chaos and that the contagion is spreading to other very large real estate developers and firms invested in commercial paper. If you can, talk a little bit about counterparty risk, the derivatives market, and how this default will spread beyond China's borders. How long, in your opinion, will it be before the US or European markets are affected? <coughs> Back in the 08 market bus days, I did um, basically um, risky asset and global macro analysis full time of mm -hmm. valuation because I put my money into it. Uh, that's how I made money. Um, I made money selling research by mistake. I had to do the research to <laughs> come up with a thesis and take positions. And I spent a decent amount of money, at least to me, because I was poor, because I had to hire my own analyst because I don't just sell side Wall Street. Um, so I no longer do that on the I do macro, but macro for crypto specific purposes. I am full-time crypto now. But if you're full-time crypto, at least from a fundamental perspective, um, a macro technical perspective like myself, um, you have to understand what's going on in the world. Okay, okay. so China, as I understand it, is explicitly less leveraged than Bear Stearns and even in, in Countrywide and everybody else, they will allow significant leverage. So that's where it's different. Um, where it's the same is that's explicit leverage. Implicit leverage is there are more loans than equity to go around. That's leverage. No matter which way you look at it, you know, the, they might not say that in business school and a lot of the smart guys, but, you know, if you have $100 to your name and you have $110 of debt, you're over leveraged. Right. Uh, that's like having excess margin and a margin call that has yet to happen. Um, now, um, there sh probably is some type of contagion. Very difficult because there's so many distortions in the market. Um, we were talking about things like derivatives and um, you know, so-called bad words, but in my opinion, derivatives are not bad at all. I mean, the US dollar was a derivative, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, of gold, yeah, at one time. Right. Right. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a derivative. The problem is when you have opacity in pricing and reporting, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Because now it's not about being a derivative. It's about being a lie. Okay. Or misdirection. And that's what happened in 2008. Because if there was true transparency, right, or a lack of opacity and clarity, then you could, there's nothing wrong with selling risk. But when you sell the risk, the buyer should be aware of what risk they're buying. Okay, now if the buyer's not looking, that's the buyer's problem. If you conceal it purposely to the buyer, you know it's fraudulent. Or let's not use a legal term, you're lying. Right. I guess okay. the big the big the big um, concern is that the derivatives derivatives market is pretty much interconnected bank to bank and through the Federal Reserve System. We're connected to China's economy. We're connected to the European economy. Is there, in your opinion, a risk of that contagion boiling over into the U.S. markets? So let's take derivatives out because that is true, but it's a very subset, small subset of what the actual issue is. Okay. The banks are interconnected, right? There is no banking system in, and I hate to say the developed world because I find that to be a little condescending, but in the larger um, global economies. There is no banking system that can operate independent of other banking systems. Mm -hmm. The big granddaddy for right now, which was always, which will always be the banking system that uses um, and controls and owns the reserve currency, which is now the U.S. Before the U.S., it was a pound. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the reserve currency is defined as he who has the biggest gun. 
It's not an economic thing. It's pure military power, and geopolitical and economic power. So the U.S. as the biggest system with the most powerful central bank is highly reliant on the Japanese central bank, Japan central bank, mm-hmm. the China central bank, the, EC, the ECB, and the Bank of England. Highly reliant. Okay, and without them, the U.S. collapses. Mm. Now, the same goes with anybody else, and probably even more so. China is very reliant. EU very reliant. UK very reliant. Japan, South Korea, etc. So, um, they act as backstops to each other, liquidity providers to each other, etc. Mm. When one goes, that's the same the domino effect. You go on YouTube, you push that one domino, they all fall, and it's unavoidable. If you put gaps in, they'll save gaps. And so you put the dominoes far enough apart where one domino doesn't hit the other. Well, then once it comes to providing liquidity, that liquidity can't jump that gap either. Mm-hmm. So you, you need that interconnectedness. But the interconnectedness is uh, um, highly conducive to a contagion effect. Yes, now, agree. That contagion effect is avoidable if you can reduce the amount of Scammies. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good point. Thanks for those thoughts. 